When air expands diabetically, which is just a fancy way of saying that as it expands, it's neither gaining or losing heat, then its pressure and volume are related to each other by the equation PV to the 1.4 power is equal to C, where C is some constant. Suppose that at a certain instant of time, the volume is 400 cubic centimeters and the pressure is 80 kilopascals and is decreasing at a rate of 10 kilopascals per minute. At what rate is the volume increasing at this time? This is a related rates problem because we're given information about the rate of change of one quantity and we want to know about its relationship to another quantity. So what quantity are we trying to figure out here? What rate is the volume increasing at a specific time? So we're trying to figure out what is the change of volume with respect to time at this moment of time. Well, what else do we, what, so that's what we need to know. What do we actually know about this problem? We know that the volume at that moment of time is gonna be 400 cubic centimeters. So V equals 400 cubic centimeters. We know that the pressure at this moment of time is gonna be 80 kilopascals. So P equals 80 kilopascals. And we also know that the rate in which the pressure is changing is it's decreasing at 10 uh, kilopascals per minute. So we get that dP over dt at this moment is negative 10 kilopascals per minute. You notice I have put a negative 10. The negative 10 represents that the change of pressure is decreasing with respect to time. So we're able to make, we've able to observe the given information and what we need to figure out. Now we've reached what's typically the hardest part of a related rates problem is actually coming up with the equation that relates together pressure and volume, the two quantities in play here, right? We need to relate together the derivative of volume with the derivative of pressure. So we need to find an equation that relates pressure and volume and then take the derivative implicitly. But the good news is, and this is what's so beautiful about this problem, is they're giving you the equation. It's just handed to you on a silver platter. Wow, how amazing. And that does happen sometimes that because of the scientific applications, the equation that we have to relate the quantities is essentially already given to us. We don't have to search for it. That really removes the hardest part of this problem, definitely. We're now in the position where we need to take the derivative of both sides of this equation. So we take the derivative of the left-hand side with respect to t. We're going to take the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to t. As we take the derivative of the left-hand side, because we have a product of two things, in order to expand the derivative, we're going to use the product rule. So we're going to get the derivative of pressure times volume to the 1.4. And then we're going to get pressure times the derivative of volume to the 1.4, like so. On the right-hand side, we have to take the derivative of the constant. But notice they didn't give us the derivative of the constant. And guess what? Don't know, don't care about that constant because its derivative is going to equal zero. That's why it wasn't given to us. Uh, next, we need to finish calculating the derivative of volume to the 1.4. Be aware that we are taking the derivative with respect to time, not with respect to volume. So the chain rule comes into play here. The derivative will look like 1.4 times V to the 0.4 power. That's the outer derivative. We're going to lower the power by 1 there. And then we times that by the inner derivative V prime. Now, at this moment, we've now finished all the derivative calculations. We're going to plug in the information that we know into this uh, into this equation here. So the change of pressure, remember, with respect to time, was a negative 10 kilopascals per minute. The volume uh, was 400 cubic centimeters. And I'm just going to leave that right now as 400 to the 1.4 power. Uh, I'm going to practice what in computation theory is called lazy computation. It sounds like a bad thing. I mean, how could lazy be good? But the idea is we're not going to compute it until we actually need it. Uh, it turns out we're going to wait because later on, if we just if we postpone the calculation, we might find it easier to do it later than it is now. What's the hurry? There isn't one. Uh, so then we're going to plug in the pressure, which we know that to be 80 kilopascals. Then we get 1.4 times V to the 0.4. So again, we're going to get 400 to the 0.4 power. Again, I'm going to be lazy in my computation. And we're going to times that by V prime, which we don't know. So now when you look at this, we got a bunch of numbers. We could try to crunch them in our calculator and go from there. But essentially, we have to solve this linear equation for V prime, which we don't know. So we're going to move this quantity to the other side of the equation. It's, we have a negative 10 times 400 to the 1.4. So when we move to the other side of the equation, it will become positive. So we get positive 10 times 400 to the 1.4 power. Um, on what's left on the left-hand side, notice that 80 could be factored as 8 times 10. The reason that's advantageous is if you times 10 by 1.4, you're actually going to get 14. So you get 8 times 14. Uh, that way you can avoid the fractions, right? 400 to the 0.4 power, and then times that by V prime. We then need to divide both sides of the equation by this coefficient right here, divide both sides 
by the 8 times 14 times 400, uh, 400 to the point 4. 8 times 14 times 400 to the point 4. And so now we're going to see that our lazy computation actually paid off. Notice that we have a 400 to the 1.4 on the top, and we have a 400 to the point 0.4 on the bottom. Uh, this is an exponential expression where you have the same base, and since we're across the fraction bar, we're going to subtract the exponents there. And so we end up with the change of volume to equal 10 times 400 to the first power over 8 times 14. You'll notice that at this moment, we, don't, we, we just have to take 400 to the first power. That's pretty easy. That's just 400. So we don't have to compute any exponent. It actually cancel each other. It, the, the exponents cancel each other out. And so no irrational numbers were ever necessary because in the end, the irrational numbers cancel out. I would recommend this. You know, having an algebraic mindset instead of a numerical mindset, that mindset can help us with these lazy computations. And so if we continue on with this thing, uh, we're going to end up with... Uh, We'll, we'll, we, we simplify the fraction. We get 250 over 7. Whoops, over 7. Don't worry about the arithmetic. That's not the point of this video. 257, uh, 250 over 7 what? This is going to be cubic centimeters per minute. Uh, although an approximate solution is probably more advantage, advantageous for us here. So we're going to get 35.714. And this will be centimeters cubed per minute. As then, that's going to be how quickly the volume of this gas is increasing at this specific moment in time.